Hey, good morning everybody. Hopefully everybody's having a great Saturday today. Uh, here in Temecula, I'm going to give you our weather report and today is uh, actually rained last night and this morning and I'm looking outside my office right now and I do see a little bit of sun. So, that's a good thing I guess. But anyway, we can still use the rain here in the area in this valley. Guys, this is uh, Bill and Emily and we're here again to give you a little health tip. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, kind of lay the platform out of what this is going to be about because of what happened on Wednesday. And that's why I've got the topic as, uh, as saying, you know, scrap your um, weight loss scale. It's not about the weight on the scale. It's all about the uh, losing body fat and actually how your clothes fit. And so this is a tip for those of you that are trying to lose weight or have been... Uh, Oh, going on those, uh, what do you call those, uh, fancy fad diets that, that they just, they don't work. Uh, most of you know that. Uh, most of you have been on those over and over and over again, and the results are always the same. You quit, and you don't lose the weight you think you are. Well, how about those of you that are going to the gym and are going on the cardio equipment, I don't know, four or five, six times a, a day, a, a, a week, um, you you think you're eating clean, and you just don't seem to be losing the weight that you would like to, or you might be not losing any weight at all. Uh, some of you might be uh, even gaining weight. Well, there's a reason for that also, and that's what this uh, tip is here for you guys, because I kind of want to give you guys an idea of what Emily and I do and why um, at our age uh, we're able to stay in the shape we're able to stay in and do the, do the uh, exercises we can do and also those of, uh, uh, those, of those people that we've worked with uh, now and in the past and why uh, they have been able to get the results that uh, they're getting because there is a protocol. Um, and so I'm kind of, kind, of, kind of giving you guys a little tip about what that protocol is. And uh, Wednesday, when Emily and I went into the gym, actually when we drove up to the gym, we must have spent, I don't know, probably 10 minutes trying to find a parking place because obviously um, a little later this year than, than a few years, but people are finally realizing that summer's getting close. And so they better start right now on uh, losing that extra weight, uh, but I like to call it body fat. And so they're now coming in the gym. So we had a hard time finding a parking place. So we get in there, and in the gym that we're going to, there's, uh, I mean, there's a ton of cardio equipment, uh, treadmills, uh, ellipticals, uh, stairmasters, uh, recumbrance bike, uh, rowing machines. I mean, I mean, I'm talking. There's a bunch. When you first walk in, there's a whole bunch. Well, guess which area was crowded that day? Well, it was the um, cardio area. And uh, we've been going there for probably, I don't know, two and a half years, maybe now. And some of the people that I see on that equipment, I've seen there for a long time doing the same thing over and over and over again. And um, their bodies don't change. The other thing is, so, but we ourselves, the first place we go into is into the strength training gym, the, the department there. So when we walked in there, it was not crowded at all. There was not that many people inside there. So that's what prompted me to uh, bring this up is because people have it backwards. You guys, it's not about how much cardio you do. It's all about strength training and what that does to the metabolism of, of the body. And so uh, on Friday, we went to the gym and all it was packed again. It was crowded again. And so, uh, but this time when we walked in the gym, the cardio area uh, wasn't that crowded. And actually, I didn't see the same people on the equipment. Um, so we went into our normal routine, went into the uh, strength training department or area, and it was packed. So I don't know what happened. I don't know uh, who they talk, talked to or, or what they read or Googled or whatever happened, but it was packed. And it was kind of cool because it was packed with people that I haven't seen before. Um, and not just the same people that go there all the time that are in good shape. They're, these are people that we haven't seen before that are in pretty good shape. So 
here's the scenario. So Wednesday we get in there and the cardio equipment was packed, okay? The people that are on there are, are and, and, and I, as being judgmental, I'm not trying to be judgmental, but my career is a wealth and, and conditioning coach and a strength and conditioning coach. So you know what? That's my job. That's how we made our living for years and years and years is because I have to look at some somebody and ask them questions because they want to lose weight or body fat. So I have to ask them the questions. So I'm not being judgmental. I'm just looking at them saying, okay, this is what we need to do. Well, those people on Wednesday were, most of them were the same people I've seen for months and months and months, and their bodies haven't changed. Then on Friday, I go inside the weight room and it's crowded where the cardio area was not crowded. And those, a lot of those people there and I'm talking I'm not just talking about young people I'm talking about mid-age people and also some of us old farts and a lot of them were in good shape so that just kind of sets the story up here on on why I'm bringing this up and why you need to understand that it's not about all the cardio you're, you're not going to lose the body fat you want to lose by doing tons and tons and tons of cardio it's not going to work because most of you uh, already know that and most of you are just doing cardio, but you're not changing your lifestyle at all because you don't know. You're not being uh, taught or educated that there's, there's other parts of the puzzle that you have to do. So first tip is that, first of all, guys, you got to go, you got to find a good workout routine, strength training routine that fits you, that, that you're comfortable with, that, that is safe for, for you. We have found, because Emily and I have been doing this for de de decades, we have found out that one of the best uh, workouts, strength training workouts, is interval training. Because interval training can be used by all ages, even up to senior citizens. You know, there's research out there that shows a, uh, shows a uh, uh, research, uh, researchers went into a senior home and put people on an interval training program, strength training, that's with weights, you know, not just uh, not just their own body weight, but with weights too, and they gained muscle mass, okay? So there just shows that it's interval weight training is safe for all ages. So that's the first thing you have to do if you guys want to lose weight. You have, you're, you're going to have to get on a good interval training routine that fits your criteria or fits your timeline. Um, you don't have to be in the gym six days a week for two and three hours per day. That doesn't work either. That you're just overtraining. See, this is the other part of it. This is there's so much involved. There's there's a lot of parts of the puzzle. Your body, when you're doing any kind of exercising, that could be uh, cardio or it could be uh, strength training. When you're doing cardio, you're exerting a lot of energy. Okay, you're consuming a lot of ox oxygen, which means you're burning a lot of energy. Well, what's the byproduct of burning that energy? Toxic waste. Okay, so what's the toxic waste from your body is, is actually like the lactic acid, CO CO2, and stuff like that. You're making your body more acidic, guys. Okay, that's what's going on here. So you're, I mean, I actually read an article where a uh, athlete who uh, somehow, uh, he got cancer, I think it was colon cancer, I think he got stage three, and um, he was working with an alternative uh, doctor, a holistic doctor, and this guy was an athlete, so he was training five to six days a week, okay, so this is just an example of what I mean about the metabolic waste your body produces when you exercise. So what happened is his holistic doctor, who was also an ath athlete, so he understands uh, recovery and what uh, and how exercising can produce met uh, metabolic waste or toxic waste. He told him, "You got to back off from exercising every single day. You can exercise three days a week, but we because you have cancer, okay? Cancer lives in acidic environment at the cellular level." He had he needed to clean up his lifestyle to get, to be more alkaline. See, when your body is slightly alkaline, your cancer cannot live. So what the doctor was doing was he didn't say stop exercising because your lymphatic 
system still needs to work. And that's how you do it, by exercising or moving or walking. He didn't say to stop. He just said to back off so that your body does, doesn't get overran with free radicals because that's all the uh, what exercising produces is free radicals. Well, why do Emily and I and those of us, that like or like Shan Stratton, he teaches... Um, uh, recovery with hydration with hydrogen rich water. Why does it work so well for recovery? Because it flushes out the metabolic acids that we produce when we exercise. So a lot of your athletes are now drinking the hydrogen, uh, hy uh, hydrogen rich water. A lot of your professionals are. That's why Emily and I don't uh, get sore after we change our workout. No, we don't get sore. We recover very fast. Okay, so that that's the reason why your uh, your your uh, you you guys get sore. Okay, now, what is the root cause? Let, let, let's find find out why you cannot uh, lose that body fat, or why is it so hard coming off, or why is it so slow coming coming off? Well, first of all, let's go after the root cause of of the body fat. Or why do pe why are people overweight? Why is this country one of the uh, uh, sickest countries in the world. Why is this country one of the fattest countries in in the world? Because people aren't understanding what the root cause is of body fat or fat, o obesity. Okay, guys. So let's go after that because this is going to build up to what I'm trying to uh, tell you guys about losing body fat because we need to understand the root cause. Okay, so the root cause of it is. Acidosis, chronic acidosis. That is the root cause of obesity. Now, inflammation. What's the root cause of inflammation? Chronic acidosis. Also, dehydration. That's the root cause. Now, inflammation is what causes obesity. So, you have to get rid of the inflammation. Now, researchers now say that most all diseases like cancer, the root cause of most all diseases like cancer is inflammation. Okay? Why are you getting sore after a hard training session? <laughs> inflammation. Why is yours, uh, why does your joints hurt after you have gone through a training session? Inflammation. Okay? So, chronic acidosis is the root cause of all this. So, we got to have a way to flush it out. Now, how many of you are drinking um, 8 to 12 glasses, uh, 10 ounce glasses of water a, a day? Okay, very few of you are. Okay, uh, one thing I notice in the gym, no matter what time of the day I, I, I go, most people are not carrying around any water at all to hydrate themselves while they're training. Okay, understand this. How to eliminate inflammation is hydration. But the problem is that everything everybody's drinking is toxic. Your bottle of water is toxic. All, they're all to toxic because they're in plastic and because where they come from. You guys that are drinking bottle of water that says spring water or Aquafina or, or all that really, oh sorry about that, my little thing fell. All that really is, is just filtered city water. That's it. Most of you don't, I'm sorry about that, most of you don't know that, but that's all it really is, is filtered city water. So guys, you're not getting the, uh, the, the correct type of water to be able to flush out the inflammation or the metabolic toxins your body's building. Um, those, those of you that think that you're going to, um, oh, I don't know, I probably shouldn't say the store's name, but... Those health food stores, and you're you're paying a buck fifty to two fifty for um, all those alkaline waters. You know they'll say nine point five, eight point five, whatever they they you know all the alkaline water. You guys, you're being duped. You're you're spending money on something that is actually going to put your body in an acidic environment. Okay, remember what I said. Chronic acidosis is the root cause of obesity. you got to get your body cleansed. you got to detoxify every single day. But you've got to have water that is is, is, is hydrogen-rich water. It's a very, very selective antioxidant, and because of the structure of the water and how it goes through the electrolysis process in a device, is it changes the structure of, of the water. 
not, I mean, it's, it's all about the hydrogen in the water that is therapeutic to the body. Now, it's not about the pH of the water. So let's get that straight. I can change the pH of any water with ars arsenic and make it alkaline water. You're going to drink it? No. I can change the pH of the water with lye that the city uses to put in their waters to protect the pipes. But it's, it's a carcinogen. It's a toxic chemical. Are you going to drink? Do you want to drink that? So you go buy Aquafina or Dasani or Smart Water or whatever you want or those alkaline waters you buy at the store. And uh, you heard this video or you watched the uh, video and lye has a pH of 14 and you put the lye in that water. It boosts up the pH. Are you going to drink that? No, you're not going to drink that because that's not what it's about. It's about the hydrogen in, in the water. And how do you get the hydrogen in the water? Well, the simplest and fastest way is through electrolysis, a device that hooks up to your uh, uh, sink or to your faucet on, on your sink changes the structure of the water. That's how you do it. That is what's going to flush out the inflammation of your body. Okay, now, so we, we, we understand the root cause. Okay, we understand why you, you, you get up on there on the cardio, doing a, an hour of cardio, hour and a half of cardio, and you're not losing weight. You're not losing body fat because what are you doing? You're producing more of the acid in your body, okay? So the second part is you're drinking water that's acidic. Like I said, all your bottled water, sodas, and I'm even talking about your sports drinks. I'm talking about your recovery drinks. They're all acidic to the body. So you're drinking, so you're putting more acidity in, in your body. Then uh, you're, you're going into the weight room after doing all the cardio, and you're doing more strength. You're doing strength training. You're producing more metabolic acid causing your body to be more acidic at the cellular level. I'm not talking about the blood, so let's get that straight. The blood is always going to stay slightly alkaline no matter how acidic you are at the cellular level. Your blood is going to stay alkaline. That's just the way the body is designed. If you get below 7.35, you die. If you go above 7.45, you die. So your body has a mechanism that will buffer the blood to keep it at an alkaline as it drops. It'll stay there. I'm talking about at the cellular level. Okay, so you, now you, I hope you guys understand what I'm trying to say here. Now, okay, why, are we, uh, why is obesity so, uh, so high here in the United States? Um, why is it you cannot uh, lose weight? Because we said it. Okay, chronic acidosis is the root cause of obesity or weight gain. So, why does the body create more fat when you're exercising or when you're eating bad foods? Well, think about this. The body's not stupid. So, this is, this is how the body works. The body's not stupid. So, when you understand this, then you're going to understand how to lose that body fat. And so this is the whole story. See, this is where a lot of trainers and nutritionists and exercise gurus and all those books you buy at the stores that talk about food and diet and changing your, you know, that's all, I mean, it's all true stuff. I mean, you've got to change your, your food too. But that's not where it starts. It can't start there, guys. You have to understand this. So you got to understand why people are overweight. It's because the body has a mechanism in it to protect itself. See, the, the human body is not stupid. Our ancestors did, have never eaten like we eat in the modern day. Nope. Intermittent fasting. That's what our ancestors have done. That's one thing we teach a lot about is intermittent fasting. That is so, so important if you want to be healthy. And if you're, if you're looking to lose body fat, that is so important. So, the mechanism in the body, when your body is in chronic acidosis due to excessive exercising, could be cardio, it could be weightlifting, then what happens is, is your body at the cellular level, when, whenever you get too acidic, it takes the acidity, and it's going to put it into a fat cell that is surrounded by cholesterol so that the acidity doesn't damage our body or our, our cells, the, the cells or our muscles or our organs. Okay, I'm going to say it again. When you're over acidic, the body has a mechanism that takes the acidity and puts it into a, I'm going to call it a fat cell, wraps cholesterol around it so it can't escape, 
And that's how it protects itself. If your body gets too acidic, you will eventually die. So as you keep training harder and harder and harder, and you're putting in the free radicals from the training, you're drinking water with free radicals, you're drinking sports drinks with free radicals, you're drinking those recoveries with uh, free radicals, the air you're breathing, free radicals. The food you're eating, now you all know this one, but yet you still do it every day, three to four times a day. The food you're eating has pesticides, herbicides, and many, many more. Look up um, how many of the uh, different pesticides and herbicides have they found on food now. So you're taking in more free radicals. You, you see what's happening here? You're overwhelming your body with free radicals, okay? So your body has to protect itself. So guess what? When it runs out of fat cells to put the acidity into, guess what it makes? It makes more. Yes, it does. It will make more and put more in there. It'll put more in there. And that's why people get bigger. And I mean, you know, uh, uh, when somebody says, and this is my opinion. Well, actually, no, it's, it's, it is my opinion, but I've seen a lot, of, a lot of research on this. Oh, it's genetics. Oh, it's this. That's why I'm fat. You know what, guys? I got to disagree with that. You know, there might be a little bit of percentage there, very little. Majority, no. Because all you got to do is go to a store walk around the store, look in those people's baskets, and look what, they're, look what they're fitting themselves and their kids, and then look at them. There's your answer right there, okay? Okay, so now we, uh, we understand this, right? We understand that chronic acidosis is the root cause of obesity or of gaining weight because your body's overly acidic, so the body's mechanism is actually helping or saving your body by putting your, your uh, extra acidity into fat cells. And every time you get more acidic, it gets fatter and fatter and fatter. Now, how do we get rid of that? How do we reverse it? Because you guys, after all this negativity that I've been ta talking about, there's hope. There is hope. The hope is education. Understand why you're going through the way you are or why a family member is getting heavier and heavier and heavier and they're going to create either diabetes or some law, you know, in long terms, they're going to get a degenerative disease. So let's reverse that. And how do we reverse that? Well, that's what Emily and I like to teach. You know, this, it's a, it's a, we teach a hydration class and that because that's where it's got to start. Okay. And this is why it's got to start there. 75% of your body is water. Your brain is 80 to 90% water. Your blood is 90% water. Your kidneys are 82 and a quarter percent water. Your lungs have the most water. All right? The other 25% is food. So let's go with the 75% first. Okay? Let, let's figure that one. Let's get that one fixed. And you all know from this video so far that the water you're hydrating yourself with is poison anyway. So there's 75% of your water with that, that poison in it. So... How are we going to reverse the fat gain? Change the type of water you're drinking first of all. That's the first thing I do. That's my plat my plat platform. As a wellness coach for over four decades, five years ago is when I uh, discovered hydrogen in the water. Okay, when I discovered what it can do to the body, not only as weight loss, but as also with other medical di diseases and how it helps the immune system. I'm not saying the water is a cure-all. It's not. It's not the cure-all. It's just a tool to help the immune system, okay? Because, you know, your body knows what weight it's supposed to be at, but because of the over the uh, chronic acidosis here in the United States, the body doesn't have a chance, okay? So, we're going to reverse the, uh, we're going to reverse the uh, weight gain by changing the type of water you're having. And why is that? Because the structure of hydrogen-rich water, which is the scientific name is uh, molecular hydrogen H2. So if you guys want to uh, go on a um, science site, all the science journals, don't Google it because those are a bunch of idiots who are wannabe chemists or wannabe doctors who, I mean, they don't know. Go right to the source. Go right to the medical journals. Go to uh, Google Scholar. Put in electrolyzed reduced water 
or ERW, or hydrogen-rich water, or molecular hydrogen H2. Put those in there, and you're going to get all the scientific research you can read. Now, I'm going to warn you right now, unless you have some kind of medical background, you're not going to understand most of the talk, but at the very uh, p first part of the journals, it'll be the abstract. You'll probably understand what it says what it says there. Or you could message me and I'll send you the links too. But anyway, we're gonna reverse the weight uh, the weight gain. Okay, so what you're doing here is you're gonna change the type of water you're drinking to a water that is as structured, it's able to uh, hydrate the cells at the cellular level with it, as soon as you start drinking it, and it's able to flush out any toxic waste that is um, built up in those cells. So that's the issue you're having, guys. Those of you that can't lose weight or are doing a lot of exercise and can't lose weight, that to those toxic wastes are built up in your cell, and they keep getting more and more and more, and you don't have a way to fl flush them out because the water you're drinking, the, the uh, molecules are too big to get in the cells. You're getting 17%, and that's it. That's not enough because of the overwhelming of the body with free radicals. But when you change the water that has a structure to it, that's able to penetrate the cell wall within, in, in, it's a, uh, the gas can actually float through the cell wall. It's going to flush out all those toxic chemicals. Now, here's the key factor here. Here's, here's where it gets very, very interesting. When you start flushing those cells out at the cellular level, I'm not talking about the blood. Remember that. i got to keep going back because people seem to relate with what I'm talking about to the blood. No, I'm not talking about the blood. The blood's a whole different thing. I'm talking about the cellular level. When you're consistently flushing that out and you're drinking your 8 to 12 glasses of water a day daily and you're flushing those cells out every time you drink the water, then what are you doing? You're flushing out the toxic chemicals. So the body says, hey, Bill, you're giving me something that's healthy that I've never had before and you're consistently flushing out all the toxic chemicals we're going to go ahead and take the fat cells that are wrapped in cholesterol that has the, as, the acidity that are locked in there and we're going to bring those out and let you flush those out. And guess what? Your body's going to start using those fat cells as energy because the body's saying, I don't have to store this stuff anymore. You're taking care of me, so let's get rid of it. That's why people, when I put somebody on... Uh, uh, hydrogen uh, rich water for two weeks for free I don't change their diets or nothing I just put them on the water because it's 75% of the body's water so let's fix that first when I do that a lot of the side effects of this water is weight loss because the body is flushing itself out cleansing itself detoxing that's the word detoxing how important is detoxing to losing weight those of you that have detoxed on a green juice how much weight did you lose after you did a detox? Some are three days, some are a week, some are, I don't know how long they are. I don't do them because I don't have to. I'm detoxing it every single day. But how much weight do you lose when you do a green juice detox? You lose weight. Well, how about if you were to do that every single day? <laughs> That's a simple way, right? Yeah, absolutely. So let's do it that way. It's the healthiest way because you could do this as a lifestyle. You got to drink water anyway. So why not drink the best? You know what's really crazy is we tell people it's free to try. You know, it's not going to hurt you. It's just water. See for yourself. Don't believe me. That's why we give it away for free. We even do in-home demos for families and actually show them how acidic the water is they're drinking and how bad sodas and sports drinks and Gatorades are for kids. And when somebody sees this in real life, blown away, guys. Blown away. So, now, we've, we've, we, we're reversing the idea of gaining weight. And why you can't lose weight because we gave you the root cause now we're getting the body to work better and better what's really crazy about this is when your body gets used to the hydrogen rich water and it's used to look you know you're starting to lose weight and you're starting to feel better and you're getting more energy and if you have high blood pressure the blood pressure is going down or if you're a diabetic the blood sugar is dropping your body is regulating it's flushing itself out from all the acidity it's getting closer to the alkaline environment to be healthy 
Your body has to be in a slightly alkaline environment, okay? What happens when a baby's born? It's alkaline. What happens when you start giving baby uh, formulas and start, fe start feeding them food? Well, look at your food. It's processed. The baby starts to go away from the alkalinity and starts getting into more of the acidic side of it. Then they start getting sick. And what's really sad is that because the uh, environment is so toxic, more so now than it was when I was young, kids are coming up with child diabetes, child cancer. How about a, a 16 months old baby coming up with acid reflux? I mean, that's, that's unheard of. That's because our environment has changed that much. Got to get them back on the alkaline side of the fence, guys, to stay healthy. The body is going to want to eat better foods because you're flushing it out on a daily basis. The palate is going to automatically change. The taste of the processed foods, that's why I just said, I do not change somebody's diet for two to three weeks because I let the body do the changing. I let the, the palate change. Now, each, per, each individual is different. Understand that. So some people feel it within a day or so, their bodies change. Some people, in a week, their bodies change. Some people are so freaking acidic, it could be a month. It could be two months. And if any of you are, uh, have, uh, have, have had cancer and was told that you're cancer-free by your oncologist, well, first of all, I'm going to give you some facts. You're not cancer free. You got it under. You might have it in a um, somewhere hiding. That's that, that's a better word to put it. But unless you change your lifestyle, change the type of water you're drinking and your food you're eating, uh, it'll come back a second time. And you all know that people come back with it all all the time. So your palate is going to change because you're cleaning your body out, and that's what that's what you're doing. Then, for a wellness coach, what's the hardest thing? Uh, uh, Rachel and I. We're talking about this so a few months ago that she's a wellness coach here in the valley, a very good, a very good one, very successful one, and you know she also says the same thing that one of the hardest things for a wellness coach to do when we're doing consulting or when working somebody on losing weight or getting healthy is to change their diet because they're so used to um, eating the processed foods and how it tastes and you know and they're so acidic. I mean, I mean good stuff doesn't doesn't taste good to them. Only the, only the bad stuff. But when you clean your body out first, get it all detox, detox all that crap out of you on a day, every single day, your palate changes. So pretty soon the processed food and stuff, it's not going to taste any good anymore. Okay, guys, so that's how it all works. Now, um, and so what, we were, what we're trying to tell you here is you, you've got to clean your act up with, by changing the type of water you drink. It's the first thing you have, have to do. Obviously, once you've done that, then the next step is to change your, your eating habits. Now, my son Rodney just uh, hammered me yesterday about me calling it a diet. He said, no, it's not a diet, Dad. It's just we're changing the uh, food we're eating. And I keep forgetting about that because I'm from old school, and so we always talked about diet because I, I didn't know a lot of this stuff uh, five years ago. Five years ago is when I've learned a whole lot of new stuff, and that's why continuing education for a wellness coach or a strength and conditioning coach is so important. There's new stuff coming out all the time. So now I'm really trying to focus on saying uh, changing your eating habits or changing your uh, food platform, whatever, whatever it is. So once we get you guys cleansed um, and your body is a lot cleaner, then it's much easier for us to change the type of foods you're eating because now your palate or your body is going to accept more of that good, fresh, live foods. Okay, so the next step is to educate our clients or our, whoever we're working with about food and how important food is for the gut. A hundred percent, oh, you know, they're saying, you know, 85 percent or, I mean, a hundred percent of all diseases are starting the gut. And the reason for that is that the root cause of that is because of the, um, the bad bacteria in your gut. You get your good gut bacteria up to where it's supposed to be. Uh, your body is going to fight the diseases that you're going to be bombarded with. Okay, guys, so how do we do that? Well, we do it with fresh, live foods. So once Emily and I got ourselves uh, acclimated to the water and cleaned out, we started working on our food. 
And so we, we do a regimen of different stuff that we feel that helps us and actually it, it'll help everybody uh, at any age, okay, by, by uh, helping their gut with the probiotics and prebi prebi prebiotics. And plus we're, we're eating, uh, her and I, we're probably eating 95% raw. Um, Emily will do maybe one meal, one cooked meal a, uh, a, a day or, or at night, but her cooked meals will be uh, stir-fried vegetables or a, um, it'll be a um, sweet potato or something like that. Nothing, no hamburgers, no steaks, you know, no, no out-to-dinner stuff like that. And maybe once in a while she does and then she gets sick and she won't do it again for a long, long time. So we stick to more of a raw diet. But what we're really into right right now, and this is what we teach our clients or whoever we're, we're working with, especially if you have some kind of a disease, you got to go to uh, cultured fermented food, guys. Now, and, and I'm not real, you know, we've gone away from supplementation. You know, we we know about that because our gym, when we owned a gym, we made a lot of money off selling pills. But and there are some good probiotic uh, pills out there. I know there is. I have a couple. Uh, that I like to recommend if somebody can't do the live food, but you know what? We're closer to nature than that. So we're going to get our probiotics and prebiotics and our nutrients from live foods. And so what we've done is we've come up with a program for us, and I actually use this uh, with when I'm working with somebody who is wanting to lose weight, is we do a uh, protein powder, that's a supplement, obviously, but it's a veggie pro, pro, uh, protein powder. Uh, we do fermented vegetables, which has uh, sauerkraut in it, uh, asparagus uh, with broccoli and some other stuff. Then we do a regular sauerkraut. Uh, she makes them all homemade. And then we do a kefir for our probiotics and enzymes. And we also do kombucha for our probiotics and enzymes. So what I'm going to do right, right now, guys, I'm going to kind of show you what we have here because I have them out here. So you can see that this is what we actually do. And I'm going to try to reverse this. I hope I can do it right. I just got my phone fixed, so hopefully it, it'll work here. Let me see here. There we go. Okay, so there's the, there's the veggie protein powder that we use. It's, and the reason why I like this is because of that sticker there. Okay, I'm really uh, touchy about that. Okay, this is our uh, cultured, fermented, vegetable uh, probiotics and prebiotics. You can see the asparagus in there. And let's see, we got. I think she. I don't know what that purple stuff is. Hope she didn't sleep. It. Uh, hope she didn't slip any of those uh, purple things that I don't like. I don't know. Uh, there's the uh, broccoli there. Okay, there's the sauerkraut, so that's almost gone. We got one left. We we do this with now. What I like to do personally with the sauerkraut is I'll put it in a bowl, two ta two tablespoons of this in a bowl with an avocado, a medium sized whole avocado, and then I'll put some kind of a uh, uh, what do I use a vinaigrette uh, dressing on it. I love that. Okay, this is my this is our kefir. Now this is the kefir. I'll use. Um, Eight ounces of the, uh, one cup of kefir probiotics. It's 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 uh, enzymes in my smoothie. So I'll mix it with this protein powder with my fruits, my raw uh, fruits that are fresh. Okay. Then I also have I, I'll have kefir probably uh, four ounces. Or I'll have eight ounces in the morning with my smoothie, and I'll have four ounces around three o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. So Emily also makes uh, uh, kefir dressing, kefir cheese. And uh, my daughter made jo uh, Joanna or made a, a, a sour or a, a sour cream that was really good too. But and here's our kombucha. Now this is what I do this three de three times. I have a cup of this three times a day. And the way I like to do it because of the high enzyme digestive enzymes in it, it's got probiotics also, and it's live. I do this right after a main meal. So if I have a main meal, I'll have a, a cup a cup of this to follow it to help digest the food. Now, this is what's really scary, guys, and I don't know if I should show you this, but I want to show you what makes the kombucha. So I'm going to bring it over here, and there they are. There's the little turkeys right there. Can you see them? They look like mush, mush, uh, mushrooms. So this is what this is how Emily makes the kombucha. And these little critters are called kombucha, or um, scoobies, and they're alive. So when you're making the kombucha and you're letting it ferment, 
you can actually see the bubbles right above these. You can see how they're actually bubbling up, and it's kind of weird looking. I mean, when I first saw this, it was kind of, because I wasn't educated about it. She was, she was, I wasn't, so it's kind of gross looking to me. But now I know the be I know the benefits of it. So, so that's what we do. So we, we do our veggie protein powder. We do our vegetable fermented uh, sauerkraut. We do our regular sauerkraut, our kefir. And our kombucha. Now, some of, some of you might be, uh, here we go, let me switch it back here if I can. There we go. Some of you might be thinking, wow, I, I don't know if I can do all that. And you know what? You don't have to be as extreme as us, but just get started slow, slowly because uh, if you really want to do it right, if you want to go through the uh, true circle of, um, of health, this is what you have to do. But the first thing you guys those of you that are trying to lose lose weight, the first thing you got to do is change the type of water you're drinking. I mean, I don't know if you're following my posts or not, but I talk a lot about hydrogen-rich water, and I talk a lot about what's really out there that the public doesn't know. And a lot of people just blow blow it off, thinking that's a bunch of crap because we never heard of this. Well, yeah, because they don't want you to hear it, guys. They make there's too much money made on bottled water, and they don't want you to know how bad it is. It is that bad, you know. All you got to do is. Google um, the dangers of drinking bottled water, the dangers of, of drinking uh, city water. Guys, there's research now out there. I have got research now that shows a huge amount of estrogen in the water. The news media is doing an investigation on this. Fish are changing sex in the rivers because of the high estrogen. Did you just hear what I said? The fish is changing sex in the rivers because of the high estrogen. If you're consuming city, if you're drinking city water, bottled water, and filtered water, whatever you want to call it, that's estrogen in it. What's going to happen over time to, to, to you? I can say it. I don't want to get slammed. But anyway, guys, so I just, I, I did a post, you guys, or there'll be a post with this video that's actually going to be more specific on the weight loss, on the root cause of the weight loss and how to, and why you're not losing the weight. So go ahead and um, click on that post. It's very good. Um, I'm going to have some uh, pictures on there and so forth. So you can see it will be a picture of uh, before and after picture also. But anyway, click on that and, and really and pass that on to your friends and family because they need to know too and those of you that might be thinking well you know what this this might make sense uh, message me uh, we'll let you try it for, for free if you're in the area or if you're not we'll find try to find a place or someone to do it for you but we'll give you a shot guys let you try it yourself I mean that's the best test you know all these clinical trials or all these scientific trials and journals that's all great but what's the best test you know what? The best test is try it yourself and see for yourself. But you've got to follow the protocol because I've been doing this for a long time now. And I've seen way too much, way too much. And not only have we helped hundreds and hundreds of families out there, but we know other people are doing the same thing as we are. And the percentage of them seeing the results is way higher than the ones that don't because the ones that don't, they're not telling me the truth. They're not following the protocol. And I know most of you out there aren't drinking enough water in the first place. Coffee doesn't count as water. Soda doesn't count as water. Orange juice doesn't count as water. Tea does not count as water. None of that stuff counts as water. Water is water. Okay, guys. So, hey, guys, I know it was a long video, but I felt it was very important for you guys to uh, listen to me on this because, uh, like I said, a lot of people are wasting their time uh, in the gym because they just don't know. It's not their fault. It's not their fault. They just don't know. So hopefully you'll pass this on to your friends. Hope you guys are having a great day today. And like I said, if you got any questions, uh, you want some more information, message me and we'll go from there. So guys, have a great day. We'll see you guys next time around.